or our voice is here. Um, I teach the dramatic arts program for both elementary and secondary. And I'm actually an A grad from way back and um, got to do an alt prac when I was doing my, uh, my journey and feel very strongly that you deserve a rich and vibrant and exciting alt prac that's a game changer for you and your career. And uh, that's a little bit about me. So Ben, you can talk a little bit about you. Yeah, glad to. Um, first of all, thanks so much for for taking the time to come and join us here. We're really glad to see you. We um, we love our ACE program, and without you, there is no ACE program. So we're really pleased to see you here, and pleased to see your interest in the program. And we hope you come and join us. So my name is Ben Bolden, and I'm um, as Anne said, I'm another one of the faculty members that teaches in the ACE program. And um, my specialty is music education. That's, um, that's, that, that's where I live most of the time. And um, I've been at Queens and teaching in the ACE program, I think it's 12 years now. And um, I think it's a really special, a special thing that we have going here. And uh, we're gonna tell you more about it. That, that's enough about me for now. And um, again, Perfect. really glad to have you here, excited to share some of what we love so much with you. And uh, back over to Holly. Perfect. Okay, so it looks to be working. I'll start it out. Um, <clears throat> so one thing that if you are a con ed student, you, you're aware of this, but if you're not a con ed student and you're joining us and you haven't been to Queens before, um, you'll notice that we always perform a land acknowledgement, um, often in our classrooms, before presentations. And so we just would like to take this opportunity to recognize that Queen's University is situated on the traditional Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee territory. And we're very grateful to be able to live, learn, work and play on these lands. And as future educators, we hope you'll also begin or continue to make space for this thought and include it within your, your future teaching practice. Um, and then with that, I'm going to hand it back over to Anne and Ben, and they'll they'll go through um, the specifics of the ACE program. And then when they finish, there'll be a time for questions. After that, um, I'm going to just go over the consecutive education program in general, um, and then we'll end with more questions. So I'll hand that back over now. So the slide that we're looking at right now is our second land acknowledgement because we're very privileged to have really stellar um, stellar opportunities coming out of ACE grads. And two years ago, Portia Chapman, who was in the class, was commissioned by Queens, how lovely, to create a series of images to denote the relationships Queens has to our Indigenous nations. This is just one of them. Um, but we bring in people like Portia, who are former grads, to work with you as well during your time with us. And we also try and bring in some distinguished guests uh, on our journey. But I thought it was interesting that we would highlight uh, Portia's most recent work that was just unveiled recently uh, in companionship with Holly's land acknowledgement. Holly, I think maybe you can just rotate to the next slide, which is sort of self-evident. Um, ben and I asked you early in the year what your big goals are. And Ben and I probably have a meeting at some point tomorrow where we're negotiating times in the background of all this uh, to figure out how to give you your best alternative practicum, which is, um, an opportunity to explore education beyond the classroom experience that you will have already invested in by February. So we start you thinking about that now. Some of you know about it because everyone in the building now knows about it, although ACE originated it, I don't know, Ben, was it 42, 43 years ago when they founded ACE? Um, we have our history. An awful long time ago. A long time ago. Uh, but the people that designed this program originally that Ben and I have the legacy to teach in, um, had some really good visioning for the future. And some of the bones of that are really rich and will really benefit you and your future well. So that's just somebody's goal that they wrote on Sidewalk Chalk one day. So next slide, Holly. So um, Ben, do you wanna talk with me about this or how are we gonna do this? this sure, is I'll take a turn. You just, you just tell me to talk when you feel like a break, I guess. Let's do it that way. Yeah. So, okay. um, Thank you. yeah, I'll just, 
share these highlights with you. So as Anne said, this is a program with a long legacy over 40 years. Um, our alumni are, are, are all over the place and are very active in lots of different places. Maybe you know some or have met some already. If you haven't yet, you will soon, I hope. Um, they work all over the place in galleries, museums, schools. They do outreach for major institutions. Um, they're in community and professional organizations or, and they're professional artists. Um, and wherever they go, they take a little bit of ACE with them. And we're really proud of what they're doing out there. And we're um, always, the, sorry, go ahead. No, in the program always... itself, <laughs> there's all sorts of um, ways that we try to uh, enrich your experience with um, taking you outside of your own art form to give you some experience in some others. And uh, most importantly, giving you a chance to collaborate and work and learn with another group of artists. And um, we're always surprised by where people end up. We don't know where some of you might end up because you're very good at creating new careers and new things that didn't exist before. So we don't want to give you a finite list because your imagination, which is so boundless, also uh, gives you a boundless opportunity in terms of your career tra trajectory and how you use your educational experience and degree. Uh, a couple of years ago, one person said, I'm not teaching in a school. I'm not teaching in a school. I want to teach like 80 year olds. And she's got a geriatric certificate. She's done extra work at Ryerson. She has done her master's in geriatrics. And she did a really cool placement in London, England, in a shop front place in Blackheath, where they actually have 80 year olds doing art to um, help offset um, uh, you know, memory loss, to help uh, create uh, manual dexterity to preserve it. And she made her whole trajectory out of that. She came to ACE, she's really artistic, but she said, no, no. And I didn't know that sort of thing existed. So never doubt how this might weave into the tapestry of your future careers. Um, and yeah, so I guess next slide. Oh, I'll speak to this one. Um, I am really, really, um, bad or good uh, about connecting alumni to alumni because that or, or current students it's one of my favorite things to do and ben knows this so that's why i said i'll take this slide um this is an example of aaron schachter who was a grad who uh was working at can stage um with their at their outreach and um rachel beals wanted to do theater outreach and learn how they did that and so they worked together for some time and we've had this experience also at ypt um and right now we've got um what two people at ypt who are ace grads and the nac just their new education department in theater anyway just became very arts ace infused too because there's two people there now so it tends to grow so that if places have had ace people they'll contact ben or me and say have you got people graduating or can you put this out or we want to meet your people or we want an alt prac student so we have really good relationships with lots of places and we're known next slide i'm going to interrupt here for a minute to do a little bit of an interactive moment if i can um i'd love to hear a little bit about who we've got in the zoom room so this is a great place to do it uh our ace program is for all kinds of artists. Um, we, we love to see the diversity in, in amongst the students in front of us. So um, I'm just really keen to know right now what sort of arts are represented out there in this Zoom room. So could you please um, let me know some, I, the best way, do we, do these people have chat privileges? I don't know. Let's forget the chat. That's like- Polly, the yeah. other, the other There's thing we chat. have- I'm it is in a large group, so if people feel comfortable just unmuting yourself and and speaking, but we do do we have a, we do have chat um, if you want to, to do that. Yeah, I'd like to see people write in the chat their their primary art form mm -hmm. if they would. Would you just take a second and put in there what you consider your primary art form? Love to see those out. Uh, painting. Excellent. Painting, painting and writing. And music. combo. Visual art, music, um, drama, theater, jewelry artist, printmaking, 
Um, get lots of music. Orchestration. Orchestration. Yeah. Fantastic. And everybody. Okay. Jewelry, jewelry artist. Um, we've only had one jewelry artist that I remember in the past, and they got a commission from Queens to create a series of alumni pins for years. So, like it, that, you know, there's always cool things that come up. Musical theater, music, yeah, great stuff. Okay. So fun. Great to see. Mm -hmm. Music is my main thing, but music theater is where I spend a lot of my time too. Love it. Love it. Okay, we can we can move on. Next slide, please. Picture. <laughs> Having fun in Ben's room with all the Music. instruments. Next. Go for it, Ann. Okay, so the structure of ACE is such that you do everything that everyone does in the main program because we want you to be a certified teacher in Ontario with Ontario College of Teachers certification. So it's not just a program that's about arts. It gets you a solid footing in OCT requirements, as well as having an arts infused experience with artists in community classes. Um, there's two main classes. One's community based and the other's creativity based. Um, ben does a community based one. I do the creativity based ones and they blend and bleed into each other. So they're a little bit messy, but fun messy because we want you to have an organic feeling in the program as well. Um, so that's generally, I think what that slide's about. Ben, did I miss anything? Go for it, Holly. Picture, okay. I think. Picture. Yeah, picture. That's us making messy art, and I think it's marbling uh, in the, the studio downstairs. Don't you want to come and play? <laughs> so I'll take over just for, for this slide here, and we just want to point out some of the things that we <laughs> love to do in our program. So we have workshops by professional guest teaching artists. Uh, we also have workshops by you. We uh, invite you to lead um, the, the class in workshops. We do various excursions. We do retreats. We do events. We get out of the building. We do stuff in the building. We sometimes even get out of Kingston. Yeah, we, we have do, adventures. Um, yeah. Um, Anne's been talking a, a little bit about the uh, practicum opportunities, which are really pretty exciting uh, when you're in the ACE program. Um, she's already, already talked about a lot of the amazing possibilities that are there uh, with regard to the alternative practicum. Um, and uh, we also make a point of connecting you to local and national community arts organizations. That's a field trip at the National Arts Center when we went to see the ballet. Oh. The last couple of years, we've had to be closer to home because of COVID restrictions. So we had to go to the Globe Theater and the Sydney Opera House. Wow. Because um, so we did, we, we did remote visits there and they were very exciting. So we don't let the fact that we don't get a bus get us down. <laughs> We went Why to Australia, those? we went to UK. So there's advantages to Queen. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we're gonna highlight a few of those. Yeah, I might even, I think this might be where I would take over. Uh, yeah, over office. to you, Holly. <laughs> yeah, over to me. Holly, this is a good place for you to jump in. Yeah, so this is all sort of jump in on the technical kind of stuff. Um, so now we've talked about the ACE program and the things that really make it special. And I think that um, Anne touched on the fact that you know, ACE is a program track. So you're still a part of the sort of quote unquote general program that everybody else who's becoming um, a certified teacher will be participating in. So everybody's obtaining their Bachelor of Education. And so in order to do that, you'll be participating in a lot of classes um, with students who are not in your program track as well. So, but there's a lot of advantages to our program specifically. And Queens is um, one of the highest rated post-secondary institutions in Canada when it comes to student experience. And so that's something that's really important to us and important to the, our students and, and the atmosphere that we're creating. And so we take a really inclusive approach to education and offer learning experiences beyond the classroom. And especially if you're in a, a program track like ACE, um, you know, those experiences are you know, as Anne was saying, really amazing and different and, and really geared towards your interests. Um, and 
The consecutive education program provides unparalleled, unparalleled access to careers and personal development opportunities after graduation. Um, and we set up our BEd um, grads for excellence. So one of the things that really makes our program special and really gives an advantage to our graduates is that we have a careers sort of portion of our office. And so I'm an academic and career advisor. So that means that we're here um, to set you up for success after the program as well. Um, and our program begins in May and we'll finish the following year in August. And this means that our graduates are getting out into the workforce a year earlier than many other universities. So you have that advantage of getting out there in the job market and the job market is excellent right now for classroom teachers. I'm going to um, interrupt Molly for yeah, a second. Sure. I just came in from graduation and there were a number of people who couldn't go because they were in teaching jobs. Some mm -hmm. people got a day off from their teaching jobs. Almost everybody there is teaching. And one person from last year is not only teaching, but doing some freelance work with CBC because that's where he did his alt track. So they're mm -hmm. busy and they're yeah. you're going to hit the ground running and that September start is going to make a difference. Holly. Oh, absolutely. Thanks, Dan. Um, so if all of this sort of sounds good to you, um, we're just going to talk about the options that are available to you in the ACE program. So these are our options. So when you're applying to ACE, you can apply um, or qualify for PJ or IS certification. Primary junior is junior kindergarten to grade six or elementary schools. Um, and intermediate senior is grade seven to grade 12, which is high school teaching. And those are your options. So um, these are our general requirements and applicants are recommended to have at least a B average, a cumulative average, a four year honors degree or a three year degree with 120 units. And we really, really strongly encourage um, applicants to have a half year course in developmental psychology or a full year course in introductory psychology. Um, if you're here and you're a Con Ed student, this doesn't apply to you. So this would be for those people who are applying to the consecutive program. Um, so Con Eddies, there's, there's stuff for you that you have to do, but we'll talk about that soon. Um, so if you're interested in primary junior, we also look at these recommended courses, and these are some of the curriculum areas within primary junior um, curriculum in schools. And having a half year course in these areas really strengthens your application, but it also strengthens your knowledge as an educator, because when you're a primary junior teacher, you know, you're not just teaching one thing. You're going to be teaching multiple subjects. So we just really encourage people to have that background because it really helps you in that situation. And a lot of the arts in uh, elementary schools are taught in cross-curricular ways. Mm -hmm. So that that understanding across the landscape of all of those things which you get training in uh, is also a bedrock for you to support some arts-infused creation of your own to make those create more creative than most classes. Most highly, yeah. Um, and if you're interested in IS, the intermediate senior, you have to have two teaching subjects in that program. Um, this slide shows you the teaching subjects that we offer at Queens. Um, as an ACE candidate, one of your teaching subjects will be in one of the sort of bolded areas. So dramatic arts, music, instrumental or vocal, you can't have both. You can only have one of those, um, English or visual arts. And then once you've chosen your two teaching subjects, um, be sure to check our website for specific teaching subject requirements. So there are additional requirements if you're applying to intermediate senior versus PJ. Um, you need to have five full year courses in your first teaching subject and three full year courses in your second teaching subject um, in the areas of those subjects. Um, for example, if you're applying for history as a teaching subject, you would have to have the majority of your courses in history. Um, we would encourage our applicants to have um, a Canadian history course, and then um, we will also accept some related courses. So going to that website, looking over those requirements, and then should you have any questions, contacting us and we'll provide contact information um, as a first step, just look everything over. And then this is specific um, to ACE. So I don't know if, do you want me to talk about this, Anne, or? Um, why don't Ben and I well, this is the supplementary documents. Mm -hmm. um, why don't you talk about supplementary documents and then Ben and I will jump in to talk a little bit about the portfolio okay. and how that interacts with the supplementary documents. Perfect. So, so as someone, if you're applying to the program track for ACE, you would have to meet all of those requirements for the general program that I just listed on um, the recommendation. And then you would also have to provide these additional supplementary documents. 
So you have to have a letter of introduction. So it's just a one page letter. It tells us about yourself, your artistic activities, um, how they relate to education. Basically, you know, an introduction of why you're a good fit for our program, your arts resume. So that's a resume that's focusing on your arts education experiences, interests, all the things that you've done. Um, and then your portfolio, which is just a collection of, of your experiences, your background, your art, your works, um, which Anne and Ben will get into um, more in depth. Um, here, I'll let them on this slide. <laughs> <laughs> Well, first of all, we hope that your portfolio does not have a hole in it and misses something. Mm -hmm. um, but we did a wonderful workshop last year where we altered uh, books and took old books and made sculpture out of them based on bird imagery. Um, but your portfolio could have a picture such as this if you're a visual artist to show us some of the things that you're about and that you've done. Basically, your portfolio should not be a scrapbook, <clears throat> but should be a digital, ideally, uh, representation of what you've done and what you've collected and how you would represent yourself as an artist to us. We want to learn about who you are as an artist. So this is an opportunity for you to start your teaching career. You have to teach Ben and me and the jurors, the adjudicating panels, what you're about, why ACE is a good fit for you. And we need to see your artwork to see what you cultivated for yourself in terms of an artistic path and an artistic package of work. Um, we ask that you don't submit originals. We don't want to lose things, but I think everything's digital, Holly. I didn't get confirmation. Uh, I think we've, we've totally um, moved over it, to digital submission now. And when you go to our website, there's a how to apply section and it's very um, straightforward and direct and it tells you um, how to submit these documents, how to, to do everything in the sequence of events that, um, sequence that you need to do that. Um, One see. thing that is helpful to us is having a table of contents. Mm -hmm. And if you've got images, for example, uh, a list of what the images are in the order and sequence in which we'll be seeing them. The same is true as dance. If you've got a certificates that are um, your dance credentials, um, programs that are from your dance recitals, um, videos of you dancing we want to know which person you are. are you the person in the blue shirt or the white shirt are you the person in the front row or are you the grandmother or are you the little spoilt brat kid you know we want to know who you are so you might need to guide us and again teach us a little bit so we clearly understand your role in your portfolio submission anything to add there ben <laughs> yeah just like we need to know who you are in the photograph and maybe sometimes it's people even take like you tick the photograph so you've got to you got to remember that we might not necessarily um know everything about you and we yeah it's a really good point that Anne's making um it, we need to see all your stuff and hear all your stuff but uh it's really helpful if you guide us through it um because you can't assume that we will know what you want us to take away from your um, from what you're sharing with us. So it's really helpful if you guide us through it. But Sometimes. broadly, most importantly, with the portfolio, we want to have a sense of who you are as an artist. We want to get to know what your arting is all about. How do you engage as an artist? In what venues? What does your art look like and sound like and feel like? That's what we want to know from your portfolio. And what are you, sometimes what are your takeaways from an experience? And sometimes what are your connections to a certain thing? Like I paint landscapes because I grew up on a farm and the fields and the soil is really important. Sometimes I actually take ground earth and mix it into the paint to add the textures. You know, like things that are unique to you and your arts practice. Those are things that we want to learn too. Some people do use a PowerPoint slideshow sort of thing to form as a base and have the video clips embedded in it. That makes it easy for Ben and me and the adjudicators to follow, for example, right? Because you're trying to sequence what this person is about, what they do. So if you package it in that way, that's a helpful format. There are other formats and we're not saying those aren't helpful also, like video formats, all sorts of things. But if you want to keep it simple, the PowerPoint slideshow format, I think has been one of our more successful, simple presentation formats. Ben, would you agree with that? Yep, I do. 
Okay. Any um, questions you guys have? Uh, okay. if, if it's if it's right now, it's just I'm still there's still gonna be a little bit. I'm just gonna go through the, some more sort of technical stuff about the program. So if you have some really specific ACE questions right now, um, then I'll go through the sort of technical stuff again, and we'll have another opportunity for questions after that. Sure. Sounds good. And I. <laughs> I see that we've already got one question from Emily, which I'll take this time to respond to. So um, we mentioned that in the ACE program, there are two core courses, and those are the courses that Anne and I teach. We each teach one of them. Both courses um, are about the arts and are about teaching the arts and about doing the arts and about being an artist. But one of those courses, the one that I teach, has an orientation towards community arts, which means that um, we explore what different community arts organizations do in different contexts and how um, community arts educators work and what they do, what they do when they're working and where they work. So the orientation is towards community arts. And Anne's course is oriented towards an, uh, building an understanding of creativity within the artistic process. So Anne, I'll let you say anything else you'd like to say about that creativity angle. I, I think that sort of sums it up. Uh, we, um, for example, one of the slides earlier was one of the Piaget slides. And, you know, we study Piaget and that sounds like really dry psychology stuff, but we do it through, creativity. I do it through shapes and uh, chalk and pencil crayon and uh, post-it notes and interactive group work to explore and broaden through the arts what our understanding is from some of our readings. So even though you're doing a reading, there's usually an art space response or interaction or activity that grows out of those, um, those core readings and understandings. Um, so that's what and, and in the building, my course is called EDST and Ben's is called FOCI. And um, we just thought it would be nicer for you to hear them as based as creativity and community based. And uh, the, having a question in the chat is a really good way to do it. If anybody feels like asking a question out loud, please feel free to unmute and ask. But if you also just wanna post it in the chat, you can do that. And we'll pause for a, a little while to see if we get any takers. And Holly's going to run ahead and take us through some other things, right? Yeah, I'm just going to go over the program as a whole, sort of the, the formatting. What does the program look like for you when you're here? Uh, just some general information about practicums, that kind of thing. So if we don't have any more questions right now, I'll just go ahead and, um, you know, it is a program within a program. So <clears throat> this, this is what that means. So, um, now that you know about A's, we'll just break everything down. And so our program includes specific class blocks where you'll be here in Kingston, um, followed by practical blocks or practicum, as we call it, where you'll be in a classroom. So, um, you know, I don't want to get really specific into the schedule. The schedule changes every year. So there's not, you know, a set schedule that it looks like for everybody. Um, but in general, um, you know, you can see on the slide how the in-class learning is interspersed with the practicum. And so this allows students to learn from our faculty here in Kingston and go out and apply that theory and learning throughout the year in your practicum placement. So each time you go out on a practicum, you're going out with more knowledge, you're taking on more responsibility and it's building as you move along through the program until um, your last practicum placement where you would be expected to be teaching um, the content, the entire content of the class. And so it's really just to build up of you gaining that knowledge and then going out and practicing it. Um, so more about practicum. So it tends to be a really popular area and uh, lots of questions. Um, here at Queens, you're gonna have 18 weeks of practicum in a publicly funded classroom. And so we work with 26 boards um, all the way from Burlington to Cornwall. Um, and this is the list of public boards. And on the side, um, sorry, the public boards, and there's also the Catholic map on the next slide. Um, but just be aware that your first practicum is gonna be in May when the program starts. So a program starts in May, not September. Um, and it's going to be in a Kingston-based board. And, oops, sorry. And your alternative practicum will 
which has um, been mentioned by Ben and Anne, is going to take place in March. And that's the opportunity where you get to do something outside your traditional classroom. And, you know, you get to do something really, really neat and really different. And that's led by you um, and approved by Anne and Ben and, and your instructors. Um, so in terms of your practicum experience and where that takes place, um, when you're admitted into the program, you choose four school boards within our designated catchment area. So within the boards that we list, you're going to pick your top four. Um, and then you could be placed in any of those boards. So there are no guarantees that you'll be in one board over the other. So when you're picking those four boards, there's a potential that you will be in, in any one of those four boards for your practicum placement. Um, and that could be up to an hour away from your home address. So wherever you're listing your addresses, where you're staying, it could be an hour away from there. And all of our practicum placements are arranged by our practicum office. So you're not able to make those arrangements yourself. Um, if you want to go to the high school that you went to, you're not able to go to a school where you have an affiliation um, with them. And speaking from experience, it's not a good idea. Um, I wish I hadn't. So that's a good thing. Um, and then uh, one thing to be aware of is that, you know, with that, that practical placement in May, for the remaining, you know, I know a lot of people want to be in Kingston because you're going to be at Queens, um, but the reality is there's just not a large enough population in Kingston to support all of our students having practical placements in Kingston. So just, um, again, being aware that you're listing those four school boards, and it could be any of those school boards. So there just won't be um, a spot for everybody in Kingston for your practical placement. It's also a good idea to think about where you would like to embed your career, mm -hmm. because you do get the one Kingston placement, and then having the others as opportunities to see how different boards work and approach education is a really valuable tool, and it's sort of hard to get. So having those different areas at your, you know, that you could go to is a really important thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. That's really important. So think about that, you know, over the application period, about what places that you could stay in, who you could live with, uh, if your parents can tolerate you home that long, um, mm -hmm. those sorts of things, because you do want different kinds of experiences and different natures of experience as well as Holly said. Mm -hmm. um, and then just with this slide, so this is Duncan MacArthur Hall. So this is where the Faculty of Education is. This is West Campus. So for those on-campus Queens portions of the program, this is the building where you're going to be. Um, and we have specialized classrooms. So we have an art classroom. We have a drama classroom that Anne works out of. Um, we have a tech ed shop, a gymnasium. So we have our auditorium. So um, there's it's a specialized um, area for teachers. And there's other people in the building, but the majority of us here are all in education. And so just having an idea of where exactly you're going to be. And um, I probably don't have to sell you on Kingston, but we, you know, I'm a little biased. I really like it. Um, and it's a really great location that if you are from a different area, it's sort of right in the middle of a lot of these major hubs. So if you're traveling, if you're flying, there's all these different locations that are really close by like Toronto and Montreal and Syracuse in the United States. So um, there's lots to learn about Kingston. There's lots to do. And we have the link here um, called about Visit Kingston and it has sort of like highlights and restaurants and fun things to do. Um, in terms of housing, when you come to Kingston, there's a range of housing opportunities. Um, as students are on class blocks and then practicum blocks, many find long-term Airbnbs, but there are lots of supports and options here for housing if you'd like to live in residence or within the student community. So oftentimes students will meet, we have a Facebook group every year for the incoming students. People will connect through the Facebook group and say, um, I found a house with four bedrooms. Is anybody else looking for roommates? And so people also meet um, and find housing in that way. So there's there's lots of different options. Um, and sometimes within ACE, if we know early, people will find people in ACE from the first um, the May placement time, the summer term, summer one. And a lot of times those rentals shift in Kingston because of the way the rental market is. So you may find even ACE people that you want to house with from September on. Uh, <clears throat> and then, um, so if, if you're ready to apply the actual application process, you're not applying directly to us, you have to apply through TEAS. So you can head to the UAC TEAS website, um, which is TEAS is just Teacher Education Application Service. 
Um, and this is the same, same website you use to apply to universities from high school, probably, um, if you lived in Ontario. And we have a specific portal for teaching applications called TEAS, which you'll find in the blue square on the side. Um, applications are open now, and they will remain open until December 1st. So you have to have started your application through TEAS by December 1st. After that date, our applications are closed. We do not accept applications um, past that point, period. There are no exceptions made to that. So you have from now until December 1st to start that process. Um, you can apply to up to three programs. So when people apply to program tracks, we always just say it's totally up to you. When you pay the fees for TEAS, you're paying for three programs. And we recommend that when you apply to a special program track like ACE, you also apply to the general program. Because um, sometimes people might not get into a program track or vice versa, and it's good to have those options. But we want you to remember um, that you'll be assessed about how you rank your choices. So keep in mind that you know if, if ACE is your first choice, you put ACE before the general program. And then we know that your preference is the ACE program, um, because we will only give you one offer of admission. And then the deadline for your PSE, which is a personal statement of experience and supplementary documents, your ACE portfolio, all of those things is December 10th. Um, and then our offers of admission will go out in mid-February and we send out those first rounds. The deadline to accept is about two weeks later on March 1st. Um, and we'll be running webinars. So if you receive an offer, we'll be running webinars um, between February 15th and March 1st. To, so you can answer questions, get more specific information once you've been offered a spot in the program. And um, something and you mentioned about what Holly just mentioned about the personal statement of experience. The personal statement of experience um, gets adjudicated by the general Bachelor of Education program. It does not get adjudicated by the ACE team. So it should not be all just about arts. It should be about your teaching strengths, the passions, the background, the answer the things from the personal statement of experience and include the arts, but it's a much broader thing that you need to speak to. The portfolio speaks to your arts thing, but your PSC is to the program in general. Sorry, Holly, I just wanted nope, to- that's all right. And then this is just our, again, just a slide. It's the key dates and deadlines, just so there's one spot where you can see all the important um, information. And again, it's all on our website as well. Um, and so uh, once you're in, you're gonna have, once you apply to T's, you'll get um, an email response from student services and the faculty of education. So once we receive your application, we'll reach out to you with next steps. Um, and one of those will be setting up your account in Solus. And when you're in Solus, which is like the Queen's account, um, where all of your classes, your timetabling, your tuition, everything is in Solus at Queen's, you'll get a to-do list. That to-do list is going to list all of those items. So your ACE portfolio, if you apply to ACE, um, your PSC, your transcripts you have to order, everything will be in that to-do list. As we receive those items, they'll be removed from your to-do list. So that's sort of your visual to say, okay, I know this is what I have left to submit. And then you know when we receive them. So you don't have to worry that anything is outstanding. Um, <clears throat> and so in, this is sort of talking about what, what Anne was talking about. So in, in addition to your A supplemental documents that we've talked about, you get, um, once you start your TEAS application, within three to five days is when you hear from Queens. Um, and then the only document that is required for every application. So if you're doing ACE, you have those additional supplements. You also, every other person has to provide the PSE that Anne just spoke about, um, transcripts from your other um, undergraduate degrees. Um, and then sort of further to what Anne was talking about with your PSE, it's just um, uh, two questions. The document allows you to explain um, what you've learned from your experience. So one part portion is going to be a chart where you can list experiences. And then the second half is like a short answer, a small sort of essay um, where you expand on an experience, multiple experiences. Um, there really isn't a right or wrong answer. It's more, um, it's more, we're encouraging you to highlight the qualities and capabilities and experiences that you're bringing into the program that you feel are really gonna benefit you or um, you know, contribute to what type of educator you hope to be, um, that you're hoping to, to be at the end of the program. Um, and we really, you know, I encourage you to really think about that because that is very heavily weighted in your application. It's 50% of your application is based on your personal statement of experience. Um, and the other half is the academic and 
requirements for if you're applying to PJ or IS. So it's something to really think about. Um, it's not a secret. The information's on our website, so you can start working on it. Um, and it's available to you. So just remembering that, that that's an important part of the application. Um, this is just all of our information. So links to our website. Um, the EDUC Student Services is the Faculty of Education Student Services main account. So when in doubt, email it there and it will get to where it needs to go. Um, that's just a fail safe. That's the best email to contact if you're not sure. Um, and then there's all the links for the TEAS portal. So if you want to go and start that application, that's where you would do that. This will be posted on our website um, tomorrow, probably. Um, if not tomorrow, early next week. Um, and if you have any other questions you don't feel like asking, you just send an email to Student Services and, and we'll get back to you. And that's sort of the, the end of our presentation. So if people have questions, feel free to, to just ask. There's a few yeah. questions in the there's chat. There's a oh, bunch in the in the chat. Can I start off and then uh, yeah, I'm going to ask some more. Gonna, Yeah, I'll jump in to go ahead. Go for it, Ben. So first question that we haven't responded to is how many people get accepted into the ACE program per year? And the number varies. Uh, since I've been there, we've had as few as 16 and as many as 36. So it's somewhere in that range that we expect to accept this year. How the about average class tends to be 25 to 28. That's sort of where we aim. And some years, as Ben said, we go over that, that some years, it's under that for various reasons. Uh, but um, that's sort of your ballpark. And one of the things that is also done in ACE is that we if all the visual arts apply, we don't accept a whole class of visual arts. The very purpose of the program is that it's multidisciplinary. And so we we actually put four boxes on the blackboard or the whiteboard where we're working to score things at the end that have arts in them so that you have a multidisciplinary opportunity when you're working together in the class. So, um, you know, if you're a musician, it's not one out of 28, it's one out of, where's my math skills, seven. Um, so, um, yeah, so think about that too. So you need that per portfolio to be sharp. Um, you need to reflect yourself, but don't ever doubt that it's not a good idea to apply. For um, the next question I've got here for the PowerPoint style portfolio, is it a video presentation or just slides? Great question. As you know, uh, PowerPoint can accommodate all sorts of media these days. So often we see um, PowerPoint presentations that have embedded videos in them. That's a great way to go. Um, it can be anything that we can access. Uh, it's key that we can access it. Um, check your what you're sending in carefully, send it to somebody else to make sure it works on their computer, because um, we're not going to spend a lot of time hunting things down that don't work. But um, yeah, any kind of media that, that best communicates to us who you are as an artist will work. I'm going to jump now because it's related to uh, Tegan's question just a little below that. Is there any limit to your portfolio length? There's no official limit, but be realistic. We're not going to spend, uh, you know, we're only going to spend a limited time with each portfolio. So you, you need to think about how can I capture the adjudicator's attention and really give them a sense of who I am as efficiently as and as effectively as possible. Do you want to jump in about portfolio, Anne? Yeah, one of the things you need to do is try and think like an adjudicator or have your friends or people that you don't even know that well, but you trust to have a look through your portfolio with you and say, I don't get it. Like, what is this doing here? Because that's good feedback. If that's what they're feeling, you need to sharpen that, change it, shift it up. Um, um, I think I was gonna say something else. Um, the portfolio itself needs to take us through that journey that I spoke of earlier. Um, I think you need to check it with other people. I think you need to find a test group. I think you need that feedback. And one of the things that Ben was talking about, that's what I was gonna tie on to. Um, when you're thinking about as an adjudicator, 
um, we have all of these portfolios and we like, there's not just Ben and me, we bring in other people so that there's only so much time as Ben indicated. What you don't wanna do is have a portfolio that takes more than half an hour of our time to access, to look through, to discuss. We have teams where they discuss, discuss the contents of it, to score, and then to make sure that that score and the notes are what we want. And that takes time. So when there's a lot of applicants, it takes a lot of time. You want to be able to be clear to make our work easy, because if our work is easy, then that means you taught us well, and you should be here. Okay. I'll just jump in about that. There's a question about practicum. Um, yeah. There's not, too, I don't want to talk too much about practicum, because if you're offered a spot in the program, the practicum office will um, provide more information. I think the biggest takeaway is just to recognize that there, you're never guaranteed um, a practicum placement exactly where you want it to be. So if you, you know, if you really want Kingston, there, there isn't a guarantee that you're going to be in limestone. You're picking those four boards and you're guaranteed a practicum placement um, in one of those boards, right? So it's not, you know, your first choice is probably what you're going to get. It's you pick those four boards and you'll be placed somewhere within one of those four boards. And there's, there's no specific guarantees that we can provide. Um, and so if you're um, offered a spot in the program, the practicum office will, will be doing um, we'll have more information and more specific specific information that they can speak to um, and provide sort of better answers that I can. I'm going to jump in about, sorry, I'm going to jump around with the questions a little bit to try and keep things uh, uh, chaptered or segmented in ways that make sense. Um, I'm just looking at the question, do we submit two separate PSEs for the ACE and the general ed programs? <laughs> This is a good question, and, it, and, it, and I want to refer back to what Anne said. Um, the PSE, you need to write for people who are not associated with ACE. You need to write your PSE for the education program broadly. You also need to write a letter of introduction to us in the ACE program. So in a way, the letter of introduction is like a second PSE specifically for the ACE adjudicators. So you, you have to create two. One, the PSE is for education broadly. The letter of introduction is very much like a PSE, but it's focused towards Anne and me. Does anybody need any more clarity about that? That the PSC goes towards Holly and her team and the um, letter of introduction and portfolio come this way to mm -hmm. Ben and me. Think of it as like all of the ACE supplemental documents. Those are on top of the stuff that you have, that everybody has to do. So if you're applying to a program, to a consecutive education program at Queens, everybody has to do the PSC. Everybody has to submit transcripts. Like that's a, everybody does. ACE do an additional set of documents your, um, that we've been talking about, the portfolio, the letter of introduction. So that's on top of just the regular stuff that everybody does when you're applying to the BI program. You're, yeah, you're applying for a program that is an enhanced program that has a legacy and um, different components than some of the other concentrations, for example. So that enhanced experience will also require enhanced documentation. So you have to do the baseline of what everybody does, but then to get that enhancement of ACE, you have to do those supplementary documents. So if that helps remind people. Okay. I just want to note, um, but not if you're Con Ed. So if you're Con Ed who's here today, tonight, um, Con Ed students only have to do the supplemental documents. So Thank if you. you're a Con Ed student, you've yeah. already been accepted into the, your final year, you're just applying to the ACE program track, not the program as a whole. So you don't have to apply through T's. You just have to do the ACE supplemental documents um, and follow the, the, the um, direction on how to send those into us. So you're not applying through T's if you're Con Ed. I'm going to pick a quick one. Does the ACE program include any studio courses? No, it does not, but there may be studio-like opportunities. So one of the things that we have historically done that's studio-based is we bring in some uh, artists to work with you. We will bring in one or two guests that are probably a lot from our alumni pool, so you get a sense of their trajectory as well. And um, 
last year when we got thrown in Zoom, we had a harmonica workshop online with a former grad. So um, we do have studio like activities where you're working with arts materials or instruments, etc. But it's not a dedicated studio course. There are studio like components. Does that help answer your question? Who answered that? Who asked that? I think I think it's good. I think we should move on. And okay. here's how about do you feel like responding to this one? How about what is the difference between program track and concentration? Are there any extra benefits as a teacher to do a track? It's a good question. Do you want to have a crack in? I think there's a good reason to do a track because you're in a program that has a history, that has a network, that has connections, that has a, a legacy of known uh, graduates over 40 years. And there, I get these email from principals that oh, someone just moved to the States with their spouse. They were an ace music teacher. We want another ace music teachers do you have any and i feel like a vending machine you know for arts teachers but they come to us because they trust the experience um the nature of what we do in ace is a little bit different because we have more components you do pay an additional um lab fee for some of the things but we usually do a retreat or a field trip uh we do several outings that you know which take ticket costs and uh, somebody averaged one year what it would cost to do it personally, and it's about 25% of what it would be to do personally if you were going to do that. Um, so it's a deal. Um, and you get materials, you get stuff, you get experience, you get studio guests, um, you get to go places, do things. Uh, it's very interactive. It's very hands on. Um, I don't know, Ben, what am I leaving out here? No, I think you're, you've, you've, <laughs> I, I like what you said. Um, the track has I, I the just, reputation I, that this, the concentrations won't have at this point in history. Yeah. And I mean, I, I we're obvious ace advocates, but, um, and so just, just to be fair, I, I'll, I'll maybe point out, or, and maybe I'll, I'll start with the difference is that, um, as Anne mentioned, the program tracks tend to have a uh, greater history and, um, more stuff, basically, more activities, more um, outside of regular class stuff, generally speaking. Um, but I want to point out that um, as much as you love the arts, you might have a passion for some other aspect of life or education that's represented in a concentration. And you may feel like, oh, I love the arts, I love the idea of ACE, but I'm really interested in assessment and there is an assessment concentration that you could focus on or i'm really interested in um, literacy and so you may decide that a literacy concentration is a better fit for you so i'm just uh i'm just trying not to be too too rah 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 about ace as much as i love it there may be a concentration that you feel suits you um better than ace and we'll be sad but we won't be offended if that's your choice and the other thing that I'll add on the other side of what Ben is saying is that if you're interested in at risk, if you're interested in the literacy and you're sitting there, but I sort of like this, the assignments that Ben and I give you, because it is school and you do get assignments too, um, that there are choices. So that, for example, the lit review that my students are looking at right now, um, people can choose how literacy and arts education go together or how creativity is enhancing literacy programs or at risk like craig morrison is one of our grads and craig morrison recently won just before the pandemic won the uh, prime minister's teaching award for excellence and craig went into the toronto school board and had a real affinity for working with at-risk students but he was a artist uh, graduated from Ontario Hall actually um, on Queen's main campus and he developed and founded what was known as the Oasis Skateboard Factory which was an alternate school within TDSB for at-risk students who 
couldn't focus in class the same way and they would make skateboards and they would paint them and they would skateboard around Toronto have a little lesson about this and then get back on the skateboards and do this so he really was innovative between his arts and his passion for at risk so uh the innovation component is also something to consider but just as you know you confuse your interests so you need to think deeply about what you want to be as an educator five years from now after this is over after you've been here who are you going to be five years from now three years out of macarthur what does your career and your landscape look like big questions for you right on a thursday afternoon any other questions here i think it looks like have we got three most of them been answered um <clears throat> No, you don't have to apply to concentrations too. Um, if you were not accepted to ACE and were in the regular program, you would give them the opportunity, Holly's office would send this out to apply to concentrations that you would be interested in. And that's done at a later time. Yeah, it's like a survey. Yeah. Um, So um, I do know that in terms of if you've already applied for the T's and you started your application, we've only just started receiving um, applications from T's. So they typically don't start sending them to us until after Thanksgiving. And I think we probably won't be sending any emails out until next week, I think is when we're going to start sending those emails out. So um, check for the emails. If you haven't received an email by the end of next week, email student services and we'll look into it. Uh, Felicia, some of the program tracks do have additional documents. For example, OEE has additional documents, and I don't know what they're asking for right now, but they do. Uh, Holly's office is probably running a similar webinar for that program track as well. So that's where to uh, get more information there. Um, Everything's on our website. Everything's have we missed website. anything here? Um, if we've missed your question, shout out. Um, anyone? If, you know, you leave tonight and suddenly something comes up and you think to yourself, oh my gosh, I, for, I should have asked this or a really great question comes to mind, just reach out to us. Um, if it's something that student services can't answer, we can direct it to Ben or Ann and and they could um, answer whatever question you might have. So I think maybe we'll call it a night. Um, and thank everybody so much for coming. We're so happy that you came and that you're interested in ACE. And um, we really hope that you get in and we get to see you next year or yeah, next year um, in May. And, and we really look forward to it. So please reach out if you have any questions at all. We're here to help you and support you through the process and answer any of your questions. So. Um, Thanks so much for your interest. We really appreciate your interest and your time. Thank you. And if you have questions, get back to us and we'll try and help you because we'd love to work with you and be creative and play with you uh, next year and help you start your creative teaching and educational career path. Perfect. Thank you, everybody. Have a good night. Bye. Bye, everybody.